Welcome to Olive Branch Church, where it's Membership Appreciation Month, and we will be celebrating you, our members, through the month of November. We are so excited that you have tuned into The Word Made Plain with Pastor Dr. Vincent L. Windrow Sr. today. We hope that you're impacted, empowered, and enlightened through the Word of God. Let's join Pastor Windrow as he delivers today's message. Good morning, good morning, people of God. It's Say La Sunday here at the Olive Branch Church, Nashville and Murfreesboro, Tennessee. We are excited that you are, you have tuned in on today. Hopefully, hopefully, parents, you got up early enough, tuned in to the nine o'clock jam session with the Reverend Melvin Dawson. He had a great word for not just for your kids, your students, your children, but for the family. Josiah, the eight-year-old who became king, what did he do? And how can we raise up some Josiahs in our household? What, did, what was so great about what Josiah did? Well, one, Josiah uh, did what was good in the sight of God. Two, he walked in the footsteps of his ancestor David. And three, he did not get off that track. He stayed right there. He didn't go left, he didn't go right. He stayed right on track. Ooh, those are three excellent points as we consider how to raise up a Josiah in our families. Amen. It's Selah Sunday. Hopefully you've taken the opportunity to reflect, to pause, and to appreciate what God has done for you, what God has done to you, what God has done through you. Amen. We all need a break every now and again. Amen. Amen. We need some breaks. But not a break just a break, but a break, a pause that we would reflect. God has been so faithful to us. Ain't that right? I mean, so faithful. And he continues to be faithful because that's what he does. He's a faithful God. Amen. And he has blessed you. He has blessed me. He has blessed us thoroughly, tremendously, completely, according to his will, his excellent, perfect will for our lives. Amen. So this is Say Life Sunday. It's also the last Sunday of Membership Appreciation Month. We pray that you have felt the love, right? We've tried to program some things for your benefit to give you an outlet. We give God thanks and praise for all the energy and the effort that went towards making sure, ensuring that, that Membership Achievement Month, Membership Appreciation, did I say Achievement Month? A Membership Appreciation Month was, was a blessing. And speaking of blessing, huh? We have a blessing in store for you. Our first superlative award program is coming right up. It's coming right up. It's coming right up. So, so stay tuned. Amen. I, I, I hope your Thanksgiving went well. I do. We have something, so many things to be thankful for. Amen. Come on. Let's, 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 let's give unto the God who first gives unto us. Let's pray. God, you are so impressive and you're relentless and you're consistent and you're intrusive and you're inclusive. We give you thanks and praise for all of your traits, for all of your attributes, for all of your characteristics. God, we thank you for your holiness, for your perfect self. We give you thanks and praise that you look after us are kind to us and you send us reminders you send us signs to remind us that everything is just not going to be all right everything is already all right and we're just walking in that thing not by sight but by faith bless our tithe our offering our gift a sign of our appreciation for all that you've done 
unto us. We give you thanks and praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, people of God. Don't, don't, don't forget, coming right up, our first Superlative Award program. Check it out. Welcome to Olive Branch Church, where our vision is to create a vibrant community that emphasizes enrichment, excellence, and fellowship. We are so excited that you are here today. Here are today's announcements. Our women's ministry, also known as We Rise, will partner with Souls United to host a drive through coat and blanket drive. All items must be new and all sizes will be accepted. Coats and blankets will be collected at the Murfreesboro location from 12 p.m. until 2.30 p.m. on Saturday, December 5th and at the Nashville location from 12 p.m. until 2.30 p.m. on Saturday, December 19th. For questions or more information, please email us at women at olivebranchchurch.org. Thanks in advance for your support and participation. We will not have our Word Made Plain Bible Study Edition during the month of December. Have a happy holiday season. We'll see you in January. For more information regarding any of these announcements or to sign up for events, email us at churchofmen at olivebranchchurch.org or call us at 615-941-1268. Hi, I'm Reverend Melvin Dawson, Director of Spiritual Development here at Olive Branch Church. During the month of November, it is customary that we sponsor numerous events to appreciate the great efforts and work of our members. But due to this COVID-19 pandemic season, we've had to alter some of our plans. However, because as our senior pastor, Dr. Vincent L. Windrow often says, we have not pushed pause on our purpose we still want to celebrate our members. Therefore, it is my extreme pleasure to welcome each of you to our virtual presentation of our first Membership Appreciation Superlative Awards. The word superlative means of the highest quality or degree, something or someone embodying excellence. And so, during the month of October and early November, Various ministries of our church at both locations were given an opportunity to receive a ballot to vote for one member of their particular ministry. Then the votes were tallied up by a committee of our OBC staff, and I'm here to share with you the nominees and the winners for all of the ministries that participated. So, if you're ready to hear of the results, then let's begin. Our first category is our bookstore ministry. And the nominees are Jackie Hill, Nakia Raleigh, and Gwen Coffey. And the winner is, in Nashville, Jackie Hill. And in Murfreesboro, Gwen Coffey. Next is our Connections Ministry, and the nominees are Pearly Jackson, Yvonne Curry, and Zareen Mays. And the winner is Pearly Jackson. Now we approach our first youth-related ministry, known as our Dance Ministry. There was an overwhelming tie, so the nominees and the winners are Addison Martin and Michaela Prude. We now move to our Deaconess Ministry, and the nominees are Brenda McKinney, Stephanie Askew, and Brenda Motley. And the winner is Deaconess Brenda McKinney. Now, 
our deacons ministry. The nominees are Kerry Topps, Charles Hilt, and Leander Askew. And the winner is Deacon Kerry Topps. Let's move to our hospitality ministry. The nominees are Terry Taylor, Maddie Tyndall, Paulette Roper, Clara Akins, and Linda Brown. And the winners are from Nashville, Terry Taylor. And from Murfreesboro, Paulette Roper. Now let's move to our marriage ministry, better known to us as love, living our vows every day. And the nominees are Ernest and Brenda McKinney, as well as James and Renee Settles. And the winning couple is Ernest and Brenda McKinney. Let's now move to our men's ministry, better known as Man Up, men answering the need for understanding purpose. The overwhelming, hands down, unanimous winner is Fred Tyus. We now move to our Ministerial Alliance ministry. And the nominees are the Reverend Deborah Sandlin, the Reverend Donna Morgan, and the Reverend Chatika Phelps. And the winner is the Reverend Deborah Sandler. Our second related ministry that involves our youth is our media ministry. And with an overwhelming tie of our nominees are also our winners. They are Clark Beasley. And Jonathan Perry. Let's now move to our music ministry. The nominees are Daphne Smith, Janice Quarter, and Trina Overall. And the winner is Daphne Smith. As we now move to our prayer ministry. The nominees are Deacon John Compton and Deacon Earl Smith Sr. And the winner is Deacon John Compton. As we now move to the safety and security ministry, the nominees are Kenneth Mullins and Jay Jones. And the winner is Kenneth Mullins. Now we move to our Shalom ministry, better known as our greeters. The nominees are Vita Corley, Deborah Dangerfield, Renee Settles, and Willis Wright. And the winners are, in Nashville, Vita Corley. And in Murfreesboro, Willis Wright. We now move to our singles ministry, better known as SALT, Single and Living Truthful. The nominees are Kenesha Roan and Tammy Schult. And the winner is Kenesha Roan. Let's now go to our ushers ministry. The nominees are Cynthia Gaines, Valerie Smith, Sheila Walton, and Diane Jordan. And the winners are, in Nashville, Valerie Smith. And in Murfreesboro, Cynthia Gaines. Now the next five categories involve our Vineyard Youth Ministry, beginning, first of all, with our Vineyard Teachers. 
And the nominees are Felita Martin, Shalinda Robinson, and Erskine Collins. And the winner is Felita Martin. And now our Vineyard children and youth with awards will be given to a boy and a girl in each of our four age groups. We begin with ages five to eight that we call our stars. The winners are, for the girls, Kristen Bradley. And for the boys, there was a tie with our winners being Corbin Seagal and Christian Bradley. Our next youth group are our ages nine to 12. We call them our believers. The winners are for the girls, Nyla Smith. And for the boys, Andrew Martin. Our next youth group are our teenagers. Ages 13 to 15, we call them our overcomers. And the winners are for the girls, Karsten Bradley. And for the boys, Micah Smith. Our final age group of youth are our ages 16 to 18. We call them kings and queens. Our single winner in this category is Jamar Robinson. Our next is women's ministry, We Rise, Women's Empowerment for Restoration, Impact, Serenity, and Encouragement. And the nominees are Erica Hussey, Rachel King, and Zareen Mays. And the winner is Erica Hussey. We congratulate all of our nominees and our winners. And as a as I prepare to leave you, there is one final award to be presented, and it is the coveted Pastors Award. And who better to present the winner of this award than our own beloved senior pastor, Dr. Vincent L. Windrow. Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Vincent Windrow, and I am the pastor of this church. It is my honor to present the Pastor's Award. But before we get to that, please allow me a space of time to congratulate and celebrate all the nominees and all of the winners. Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. There is no abracadabra. There is no hocus pocus to anything that we do or achieve here at this church. It requires people chosen by God, empowered by God, blessed by God to lead, to follow, to contribute, to engage, to participate in all that this church does. And so I'm just so extremely appreciative, thankful, grateful for all who faithfully give, contribute, and do what you do to make Olive Branch Church a special place. This is the culminating event of our annual Membership Appreciation Month. And I am just so excited that we were able to present this to you. We give God thanks and praise for those who worked on this production. We thank Reverend Melvin Dawson for moving this from concept to concrete and all of you who, who participated. We give God thanks and praise for the spirit to celebrate one another. So when, when, when I was thinking about the pastor's award, because that's, that's why I'm standing before you, when I, when I was considering who, who might it be, a whole host of people came to mind. Consider the fact that the board of directors led by Cheryl Mason helped us to lead this church through some very tumultuous times. So cer certainly uh, one of those uh, members could have been chosen. Fred Tyus also came to mind. 
Brother Tyus has been a faithful member of our congregation and he has led the men's uh, small group that, that meets via Zoom on Thursdays. So many, so many people come to mind, uh, including Kamisi Waniki. Now, Kam Sister Kamisi has been such a force, a calming force, a spiritual force in our congregation at our Murfreesboro location for a number of years. She has helped to solidify our outreach to our grieving members. So we give God thanks and praise for all of those, all of those members and so many more, including Deacon Carrie Tops. Deacon Carrie Tops led faithfully the Deacon ministry through some unprecedented, unparalleled, uncertain times. And so we thank God for all the energy and the effort that has gone into making sure, ensuring that Olive Branch Church was stable and did not press pause on its purpose during the year 2020. But when I consider someone who deserves this award and who stands out, I concluded that Shatina Marshall was the recipient. Sister Marshall was key in our distribution of 2,100 free lunches over the course of several months. She also leads our Joe W. Dillard scholarship effort. And she also helps to lead our Angel Tree initiative. She's so faithful, she's so patient, she's so kind, and she is so diligent. So it gives me great pleasure to once again announce to us and to the world that Shatina Marshall is the recipient of the Pastor's Award. Well, that's it for us this year. Thanks to everyone. You know, Olive Branch Church really is a special place. And we're not only beneficiaries, but we are benefactors. We help to make a difference in the lives of people, not just here in Nashville or in Murfreesboro, not just in Tennessee, not just in these Southern states, not just nationally, but we help to make a difference in the lives of people around the world. So we give God thanks and praise for, for the opportunity to do such a thing, to be called into his service. God bless you so very much, amen.
once again, come on, put those hands together and let us thank our great God. Isn't he marvelous? Isn't he awesome? Isn't he impressive? His wonders are without number. He keeps on blessing us. He keeps on keeping us. Our God is awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Vincent Windrow. My title is senior pastor of this church and my desire is that you have been blessed, you are blessed, and you will be blessed forevermore. I believe that is what God desires for our lives. And I don't believe that we should live below what God desires for our lives. Where are they doing that at? If you knew that God had this level of living designed for you and you were living here, wouldn't you be appalled? Wouldn't you be mad at yourself for not climbing a little higher? not maturing a little bit more and for not enjoying everything God has in store for you. I believe that's all of us. That scenario depicts all of our lives. It describes our living. God has this level for us and we are living at a level beneath God's pleasure for our lives. So come on, people of God. Let's get it up. Let's get it on. And let's move. When God moves, you move just like that. God is still in the blessing business in Jesus' name. So God bless you so very much for joining in, for tuning in with us. The Word Made Plain here at the Olive Branch Church. This is the last Sunday of November. And we give God thanks and praise for leading us, for bringing us so far he has done that it has been the lord's doing and it's marvelous in our sight we have watched god move in and out of our lives we have watched god move intervene on our behalf we have watched god move disrupt the plan of the enemy regarding our lives we have seen god move it's a wonderful thing to know that god still moves. Jesus, the Son of God, he didn't always teach verbally. He didn't always vocalize the instruction. Oh, now he was a master teacher. You you remember some of the parables, the parable of the Good Samaritan, the parable of the lost coin, the parable of the lost son, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the fig tree, the parable of the sower, all of these parables. But if we're not careful, we'll only look for instruction in those parables and not also in how the Lord Jesus Christ moved how he acted, how he interacted. 2020 has has been a doozy, but it's also brought about many opportunities for us not just to read the Word of God, not just to learn the word, Word of God, but also to receive the meaning so it's applicable to our lives. I've said it before, I'll say it again, that if we walk away from studying teaching or hearing about the Word of God and only have the information, only have the statistics, only have the numbers, only have the data, only have knowledge of the characters, I believe we miss out on the essence, on the essence of the power of God's Word. All of that is fine and cool and dandy, but I believe what God wants us to learn most about His Word It's about him and about who he is, what he's done, and based on what he's done, what he can do, not just to somebody else, but to everyone else. And everyone else includes, includes you. And so when we look at the life of Jesus, let's just not walk away with what he has said or verbalized or articulated but let's also look at his example because Jesus just he doesn't always teach by words sometimes he teaches by deeds and so when we look at his his perfect example we can see without his telling us 
how to be patient, how to be kind, how to be compassionate. He, he, his, his example, it models for us the many ways that we should treat our brother and our sister. It teaches us that we don't always have to have a retort or a comeback or a clap back when haters come our way. His behavior and his words, they teach us how to live a meaningful life, how to live a significant life, how to live a life worthy of the God that we serve. Amen. Amen. Jesus was obliging to the certain ruler's request for him to go with him to his house. Jesus was welcoming to the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus was inviting to the two blind men who followed him. And Jesus was hospitable to the man that the people brought to him who was demon possessed and could not speak. Jesus didn't say anything about what he was doing, but he he showed us. There was a great writer by the name of Edgar A. Guess. He, he wrote many motivational and inspirational poems. He, here is the first stanza of one of them. Sermons we see. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one should walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes are better pupil and more willing than the ear. Fine counsel is confusing but examples always clear. And the best of all the preachers are the men who live their creeds. For to see good put in action is what everybody needs. So without Jesus saying a mumbling word, people could have observed, people could have watched, people could have seen the essence of who Jesus is. That there was congruence with what he said, with, with what he did. You could see what Jesus valued by how he approached people, how patient he was with people, how peaceful he was towards people while still having high expectations of their lives. Glory to God. So come on, let us look once again for the last time I brought, well, I don't know, I don't know if I promise you, but I, I'll tell you, i tell you. Matthew 9, verse 35 through verse 38. The King James translation reads in this manner. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Glorious God wonderful God, everlasting Father. Not unto us, God, but unto you do we give thanks and praise and glory and credit and honor because you are you. There is no shadow of turning with you, God. It does not matter by which direction we see you. You are the same. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's your consistency, God, that is so impressive. God, you have demonstrated your credibility, God. You have shown that you are trustworthy and that if we trust you for one thing, we can trust you for all things. Thank you, God, for being so kind. Thank you, God, for being so long-suffering that none of us would perish, but all of us would come to repentance. We give you thanks and praise God because you have a plan and purpose for our lives that you are mindful your mind is filled full of good things regarding us your thoughts towards us are many they're valuable thank you for wanting the best for us and for wanting the best out of us we pray that we'll hear those words 
thou good and faithful, faithful servant, come on up. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you a ruler over many. Well done. Those are the words we want to hear, God. Bless us to persevere. Bless us, God, to endure hardness as a good soldier. Bless us, God, to stay on the battlefield, God, for you that your kingdom would be established in such a way, God, that you would receive the glory and your people would gain benefit. Bless us, God. Open our ears that we would hear. Open our hearts, God, that we would feel. Open our eyes that we would behold the wonderful truths contained in your word, that we would be better leaving this broadcast than when we first tuned in. Bless now the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart that what might be said and done would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. I acknowledge that indeed you are my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, people of God. Put those hands together and let us thank him. If you have thanksgiving in your heart, put those hands together. If you appreciate God for blessing you as he has, come on. Put those hands together. Glory be to God. Hallow be his name. We pray his kingdom would come, that his will be done in, in, in earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. Amen. We're almost there. We're almost to the end of the year. A tumultuous year, a year that has seen us in uncertain times that has ill affected millions of people around the globe, that has caused an economic recession, and yet we still have this lively hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? because he's real. Why? Because he has demonstrated unto us in the word of God how we should prevail, how we should be resolute, how we should not give up, but rather how we should follow his example. It would be bad if we had no example like his to follow. We would be left to our own devices, but thanks be to God, that we find contained in this word correction. We find in this word enrichment. We find in his word doctrine. We find in his word how we should live. When the Lord looks, I told you last Sunday, when the Lord looks, he doesn't look at us with eyes to hurt us or harm us, but rather with eyes to help us eyes to lift us, eyes to heal us, eyes to bless our lives. When the Lord looks, uh, let's go back a, a little ways. Jesus has healed the ruler's daughter, raised her from the dead. Jesus has healed the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus has healed the two blind men. Jesus has healed the demon-possessed man. And even though everybody was hip, hip, hooraying and hallelujahing, hallel, hallelujahing, hallelujah, saying hallelujah, his haters, the Pharisees, were spreading lies about him. Jesus did not give them the time of day, but went ahead doing what God has placed his hands to. He went about fulfilling his purpose in this earth. And he went from cities and villages, big and small, obscure and well-known, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind, every type of sickness and disease. And then the Bible says he saw the multitudes. It, it, it was last Wednesday, based on last Sunday, that we talked about what it means that Jesus saw versus what his disciples saw. Jesus and his disciples saw the same scene, but they didn't see the same thing. Jesus has this insight. 
And his insight extended the experience. His insight revealed a new obvious and his, in, his insight opened the door for different kinds of deeds before the disciples understood what was really going on with this crowd, with this multitude. They had really no cause, no reason to pray for the people in this manner. But when Jesus revealed it unto them, when Jesus drew the circle wide enough so that they could comprehend what was really going on, now they had an opportunity to do something differently. When the Lord looks, part two. Listen to what the Lord says in verse 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Jesus saw the multitudes, he saw how weary and worn they were in their physical state, but he also keenly had this insight about what their state was, what their condition was, what their situation and circumstances was as it relates to their spirituality, their real need, not just their mental, not just their emotional, not just their physical, but Jesus saw beyond the eye of the others. He saw what was really going on with these people. And he says, here's a great opportunity. All of these people are in trouble, but here is the opportunity that something better could happen to them. Their lives could be impacted in a more positive way, in a more sustaining and stabilizing way. The harvest truly is plenteous. Look at all the folk who are in need. Look at all the folk who are struggling. Look at all the folk who need some help. The harvest is plenteous, it's plentiful. The opportunity is here, but the laborers, the folk who could, who could minister to them, who could help them, who could bless them, who could lead them, who could feed them, who could protect them. Yes, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers, the laborers are few. Listen, the need is for laborers, not loiterers. We don't need more folk just standing around with hands in their pockets. We don't need folk bystanding. We don't need spectators. The Bible says we need laborers, not loiterers. Not folk who are just here to be here with no plan to help, with no mind to work. We don't need more loiterers. We need more laborers. Why? Because some folk are in trouble in God. God doesn't need loiterers. Just hanging out, chilling out. We don't need an audience. We need an army who will fight the good fight of faith, who will stay on the battlefield, who will fight against oppression, who will fight against racism, who will fight against sexism, who will fight against pettiness, who will fight against narrow-mindedness, who will fight against small-mindedness. We need laborers who will stand on the word of God and proclaim and profess the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't need more lay, no, no more loiterers. We need more laborers. Jesus didn't say, oh, here's what the deal is. We need some folk who just going to camp out. There was plenty of folk there. The multitudes, there was a crowd, a bunch of folk. But when Jesus saw them, he saw them in a condition that needed to be impacted by folk who were committed to the cause. Not folk who were wishy-washy. Not folk who were going to stand on one leg one day and on another leg another day. We need, he says, we need folk who are sold out. Laborers, not loiterers. The universal church needs laborers, not loiterers. The Olive Branch Church in Nashville, doesn't need more loiterers. We need more laborers. The Olive Branch Church in the Murfreesboro location, we don't need more loiterers. 
folk just standing by and hanging out. We need laborers. And I pray that God would touch you in a particular way, in a specific way that would cause you and your passion for people or your passion for uplift, your passion for community, your passion for family, your passion for advancement, your passion to help. I pray that God would arouse that passion in you and lead you down the path that you would bless people, that you would help people, that you would feed people, that you would clothe people, that you would pray for people. God, the harvest does not need more Lord of us. We need more laborers. Jesus said, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Here's what you do. Run down there to that quick sack about five miles from here and pick up some barbecue skins and a Mountain Dew and a pack of plain M&Ms. No. Jesus didn't tell them to go. In this instance, Jesus told them to pray. When you understand the condition of a people, when you see them for what they are and the, and the predicament and the problems that they have and are in, Jesus didn't say go do this and go do that. Jesus started out by saying, pray ye. Because you see what's going on in their lives. You see that they are without. You see that they are marginalized. You see that they are abandoned. You see that they are left out. You see that the world has gone and left them behind. And they don't have the education that they need. They don't have the justice that they deserve. People aren't kind to them or merciful to them. The systems of this world have turned their backs on them. Jesus says we need not more Lord. Us. We need more labor, so therefore you pray. 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 When you see the condition of people in consideration of that condition, pray. Pray a prayer that's specific to that situation, to the condition that you now have given consideration to. I remember when Lorenzo and Jewel were attending the Ezel Harding Christian School. It was a wonderful academic foundation. We give God thanks and praise for sending us to Ezel. Our kids bloomed. They learned. They were engaged while they were there. They, 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 they were taught prayers. And even to this day, when we ask God to bless our food and one of the children are asked to, uh, to give thanks, they will always say, they will always include this line, please help the sick and the poor. It's a great inclusion. It's a great request. But what I'm talking about is not some general prayer. What I'm talking about is a very specific prayer based on the consideration of the condition of what you see, of the people you're looking at. What do they need? Yes, they need help. Yes, they're sick. Yes, they're poor. But what type of help do they need? What do we really want God to do in their lives? So when in, in consideration of the condition, pray. But I want you, I want to encourage you today, this Sunday, right now, to begin considering the condition of someone that you know, someone who may be down and out, Someone may be, who may be afflicted and sick and diseased. Someone who may have their head hung low. Someone who may be emotionally disturbed. Someone 
who's not getting there as quickly as they desire and they become disheartened. Someone who is disappointed in our electoral process. Someone who is disgusted with the ways of the world. Someone, get someone in your mind, get someone down in your soul and begin to pray. Pray for that someone in consideration of the condition that you know that they're in. Come on, people of God, and pray. Prayer still works. Prayer is still powerful. Prayer, the righteous, avail of much. Pray, people of God. Pray, people of God. Pray for your family members. Pray for your uncles and your aunts. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for your cousins. Pray for your nieces and your nephews. Your Mamas and your daddies, your, your husbands and your wives, pray for your neighbors. Pray for your citizens of your community. Pray for the police. Pray for the paramedics. Pray for the firemen. Pray, people of God, in consideration of the condition of the people that you know. God has opened up your eyes, not just so that you can know, but so that in consideration of the condition of the people, of the country, of the county, of the state of the world pray 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 a prayer make a request that hits that nail on the head oh of course it's always nice and kind and thoughtful if we say, please help the sick and the poor, but I know you know somebody who really needs some help from God. So I challenge you today, Olive Branch, wherever you are, I challenge you today to begin pinpointing your prayer requests on those people suffering on people don't know which way to go on people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the saving of their souls the forgiveness of their sins and the enlightenment of their minds pray in consideration of the condition of those people that's what Jesus that's what Jesus instructed his disciples to do you heard him the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers, the laborers are few. Pray. Pray. Pray for those people. Pray to God that God would do what? That God would send forth laborers into his harvest, that men and women's lives would be changed, that their lives would be transformed even, that they would be saved, set free, delivered. Pray to God, the Lord of the harvest. So Jesus didn't just direct them to do a thing. He directed them to do a thing to someone. He didn't say pray to the manager or pray to the pastor or pray to the supervisor. He didn't say pray to the boss or pray to the CEO or pray to the president or the senator or the house of representative. representative. He, did, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't say that. He said, he said pray because you know what is needed. Pray to the Lord of the harvest, the one who is in charge. I believe sometimes people of God, when we see the suffering or, and the plight of people, the dilemmas, the predicaments that, that they find themselves in, in our minds, we begin calculating what, 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 is, what is needed. We, we begin uh, uh, with these formulas and these equations to say, okay, 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 I know, I, know what, I know what's best to do, but don't ever try to change 
who is in charge. Listen, God will use you. But Jesus did not tell his disciples, he did not instruct his disciples to pray to each other or to someone along that path. Rather, he told them to pray to the one who is in charge. And sometimes, because we're so eager, once we understand the condition of people, we're so eager to help, we're so eager to do something for them, that we'll do something, we'll do anything. But we need direction, people of God. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves spinning our wheels. We'll find ourselves not impacting those people to the fullest degree that we could have if we what? We, if we, we could just have waited and prayed to God first. Our God is still in charge. That's what Jesus was saying. Jesus is saying, don't ever try to change who is in charge. Oh, I'm not, I'm not talking about some earthly supervision. I'm not talking about some worldly office or, or title. I'm talking about the one who is really in charge, large and in charge. Jesus says, now, that you see, now that you're looking as I am looking, now that you know that these people really need some help, pray to the one who can make it all right. Pray to the one who can impact their lives beyond the shadow of a doubt so that they'll know that it was God who did it. Pray to the Lord of the harvest. Pray to our God. Our God is the most high God. The Lord our God is clothed with majesty and power. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God, He is alive. Our God he is greater. Our God is a good, good Father. Our God is love. Our God is spirit. Our God is the Holy One. Our God is all-powerful. Our God is all-knowing. Our God is all-present. Our God is in all places. Our God is unchangeable. Our God is the Father of lights. Our God is the everlasting Father. Our God, our God raises from the dead. Our God is mighty to Shame. Our God is the most high God and he's still in charge. Come what may, come hell or high water, come trial or tribulation, come economic recession, come pandemic, come famine, come drought. Whatever comes your way, stand on the word of God and believe and trust and never, ever, Try to change who is in charge. Our God, he still got it. Touch your neighbor wherever you are and say, our God still has it. If ain't nobody around you, touch yourself and say, self, our God still has it. He's still making ways out of no ways. He's still creating rivers in the desert. He's still making ways through the thickest of things in our lives. Our God is still in charge. Glory to God. Our God. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. When, when we go to sleep tonight and we wake up, we'll find that God is still God. I, I, I don't know who's going to change from today until tomorrow, Monday, but I do know who ain't. I do know that God is not going to change. He is still life and light and love. Don't you want to spend eternity with a God, with a father, with a daddy like that? Oh, I remember years ago I had been visiting Olive Branch 
And there I was on Father's Day, out yonder on Cane Ridge Road. The Reverend Joe W. Dillard was preaching a Father's Day message. Oh, I had considered being a part, becoming a part of the church. I don't know what I was waiting on. I think sometimes none of us know. We just, we just want to know, though, that this is the right place for us. And I, I concluded that day that Olive Branch Church would be my home. I haven't left Olive Branch for those 20, 26, almost 27 years. What did, what did Reverend Joe W. Dillard say that was so significant, so, so penetrating, so powerful in my life? It was pretty simple, but so provocative, so inspiring, so affirming. He said on Father's Day that we should thank God for our fathers. And oh, I, I, I applaud it. I celebrate it just like everyone else in that congregation on that Sunday, on that Father's Day Sunday. Because I agree, fathers do need to be celebrated. They do need to be held in high esteem. And so I celebrated that fact, that reality, even though I had never known my father. But then, Reverend Joe W. Dillard, Joe William, Dylan. He said, and for those who don't have or who don't know their earthly father, know this, that God is your father. Oh, y'all know how smart I am. I already knew that God was a father. But I never really took in the fact that he's just not a father or just not the father and just not our father he is my father and he's a good good father and he takes care of us he'll never be taken to court for child support God takes care of his own and I am glad and one of these days, and it won't be long, you'll look for me and I'll be gone. I'll be in heaven. I will be with my father. Don't you want to go there? Don't you want that to be your eternal destination? Oh, glory to God. If you haven't confessed the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know where you would go, if you had to pack up your tent and move from this earth right now, if you've never given your heart, if you've never opened your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, would you repeat this prayer with me? Father God, I am a sinner and I confess that I am a sinner that I have trespassed, that I have transgressed. But I believe that Jesus is your son and I pray that you would forgive me of my sins and I, I open my heart that Jesus would come in and that you, God, would accept me into your family. Amen. Glory to God. Perhaps you already know him as Lord and Savior and Master and Messiah. And you feel compelled by the Spirit of God to be added to this church. Oh, it doesn't matter how you come, but it does matter that you come. It matters that you don't allow stubbornness or disobedience or arrogance to stand in your way. If either of those two scenarios or situations fit you, 
do us a favor? Will you please text I choose OB to the number that now appears on your screen? We want to get to know you. We want to welcome you into God's family. And we want to help walk you, walk you home to heaven. In Jesus' name, glory, glory to God. People of God, I pray that, that the thanksgiving, that the appreciation and the gratitude that's in your heart right now for all that God has done for you, I hope that it never leaves. I hope it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because we have so much to be grateful for. Amen, amen. This sermon concludes November. It concludes Membership Appreciation Month. It, in, it concludes Selah Sunday. But I pray that you'll never find yourself outside of the will of God. Continue. Let us run on and see what the end is going to be. Amen. Thank you once again for tuning in. It has been my pleasure, my privilege, my honor to preach the word of God to you this time again. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, God, for blessing us so tremendously, so creatively. Thank you, God, that you have been faithful. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you, God, for extending yourself in the form of grace. Thank you that you are the God of hope and the God of peace, the God of all comfort, the God of all grace. You, God, are our God, and you are awesome. It's all you're doing, God. All the mistakes have been ours. You have been perfect towards us. Bless us, God, as you have blessed us time and time and time again before, previously, prior to this moment, our request is, God, that you would settle this word down inside of us. Settle it, God. Push it down so that the enemy would not be allowed to come by and snatch it away to leave us empty-handed and empty-hearted and empty-headed. Bless us, God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Everybody say amen. God be with you until we meet again. You've been listening to The Word Made Plain with Pastor Dr. Vincent L. Windrow Sr. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you right here next week. For questions about this broadcast or general questions about our church, call us at 615-941-1268 or email us at churchadmin at olivebranchchurch.org.